in the last lecture i have introduced the concepts of testing of hypothesis what is a statistical hypothesis and uh, what is the method of deriving a test for a procedure to test whether a hypothesis uh, should be accepted or should not be accepted uh, we have given the concept of uh, the size of the test and the power of the test and based on that uh, there is a fundamental theorem called neyman pearson fundamental lemma which can be used to derive the tests which have the maximum power for a given size or level of significance now later on i mentioned that uh, this theorem has been extended to cover the cases where we have composite hypothesis testing problems uh, in particular we consider testing for the mean and the variance of uh, one normal population that is the parameters of the normal population uh, today i will introduce the tests for parameters of uh, two normal populations so the situation could be like this let us consider two normal populations so we have two normal populations say normal mu 1 sigma 1 square and another population is say normal mu 2 sigma 2 square so we are interested to compare we are interested to compare say means or variances of the two populations for example we may be dealing with the measurements which are related to say weights of implies of two organizations and uh, so they may be following normal distributions if we are having two different uh, groups then one may be population normal mu1 sigma1 square and another may be normal mu2 sigma2 square we may like to check whether the average weights are the same we may like to check whether the average variability in the weights are the same or not okay so this leads to the problem of comparing means or variances of two normal populations we may frame hypothesis like h not whether mu1 is equal to mu2 or mu1 is not equal to mu2 or say mu1 is less than mu2 or less than or equal to mu2 mu1 is greater than mu2 etc similarly we may have hypothesis like sigma1 square is equal to sigma2 square or say sigma1 square not equal to sigma2 square or we may have sigma1 square less than sigma2 square or we may have say sigma1 square greater than sigma2 square so these kind of hypothesis have to be tested so we need to derive the tests for that now as i mentioned that these are uh, composite hypothesis testing problems the methods of uh, neyman pearson have been extended to cover these cases in certain cases we have in particular for one sided hypothesis testing problems we have uniformly most powerful tests and in some two sided testing problems we don't have uh, ump tests so we consider a class of uh, restricted class of tests sometimes we are considering unbiased tests or sometimes we are considering uh, similar tests and we find out the best there they are called ump unbiased tests or ump similar tests we also have ump invariant tests so let me start with testing for the means so we consider the model say x1 x2 xm be a random sample say from normal mu1 sigma1 square and let say y1 y2 yn be another independent random sample
from normal mu to sigma two square. We are interested to test say mu one is equal to mu two. against say h1 say mu1 is greater than mu2 so let me write various hypothesis firstly let me consider this one so we consider the case sigma1 square and sigma2 square are known when sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square are known, let us work out the distribution theory here. x bar follows normal mu 1 sigma 1 square by m, y bar follows normal mu 2 sigma 2 square by n. So, if we consider x bar minus y bar minus mu 1 minus mu 2 divided by square root sigma 1 square by m plus sigma 2 square by n this follows normal 0 1. So, under H naught consider let me call it z that is x bar minus y bar divided by square root sigma 1 square by m plus sigma 2 square by n. So, if this value is near about 0 certainly we will be tending to accept mu 1 is equal to mu 2 and if it is greater than certain pre specified value then mu 1 greater than mu 2 seem to be more plausible. So, we one sided test will be reject h naught if z is greater than or equal to say z alpha. If z is less than z alpha then do not reject h naught. So, this is one sided test. We also consider here say h naught mu 1 is equal to mu 2 against say mu 1 less than mu 2. Now, in this case if we are considering mu 1 less than mu 2 then for a smaller values of z we will be tending to have favorability to h 1. So, in this case the test will be reject h naught if z is less than or equal to minus z alpha otherwise do not reject h naught. If we have two sided hypothesis say h naught mu 1 is equal to mu 2 against mu 1 not equal to mu 2. In this case the test will be two sided reject h naught if modulus z is greater than or equal to z alpha by 2 and if it is less then we will be considering accepting h naught. This takes care of all the important uh, type of hypothesis one sided hypothesis where one sided is on the right side, other one is the left hand side rejection region and this is a two sided rejection region. Let us consider one example here. Okay, let me firstly take the case of uh, second case sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square is equal to sigma square, but it is unknown. 
in this particular case we will consider pooling let us consider say s p square that is equal to m minus 1 s 1 square plus n minus 1 s 2 square by sigma square sorry divided by m plus n minus 2 and then we formulate the test statistic t that is root m n by m plus n x bar minus y bar divided by s p. So, this will follow t distribution on m plus n minus 2 when mu 1 is equal to mu 2. So, once again when we are considering the hypothesis testing problem one sided mu 1 greater than mu 2, then here we will be considering reject h naught if t is greater than or equal to t m plus n minus 2 alpha except h naught otherwise. Similarly, if we consider say h naught mu 1 is equal to mu 2 against h 1 mu 1 less than mu 2 then the test will be a reject h naught if t is less than or equal to minus t m plus n minus 2 alpha else do not reject h naught. And similarly, you will have two sided rejection region when we have the two sided alternative hypothesis. In this case, we will say reject h naught if modulus t is greater than or equal to t m plus n minus 2 alpha by 2. You can see an amazing similarity with the procedures for finding out the confidence intervals. In the confidence intervals, we had considered the same test statistic here and the reason is that the shortest length confidence interval for a fixed confidence coefficient are used. Uh, the test statistic which is used there is also the one which is used for deriving the best test for the corresponding uh, testing procedure. So, there is a close association and this was established by Neyman in 1930s. Let us consider the case when sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square are completely unknown. In this particular case, we cannot make use of the pooling. So, we consider let us say T 1 that is equal to x bar minus y bar divided by square root s 1 square by m plus s 2 square by n. This follows t distribution on new degrees of freedom approximately under mu 1 is equal to mu 2. Therefore, we can make use of this where nu is given by s 1 square by m plus s 2 square by n whole square divided by s 1 to the power 4 by m square into m minus 1 plus s 2 to the power 4 by n square into n minus 1. And once again we take the integral part of this. So, this is actually the, the integral part of it. And we can devise the three tests based on this that is for mu 1 is equal to mu 2 against mu 1 is greater than mu 2, the rejection region will be if t 1 is greater than t nu alpha, if alternative hypothesis is left sided, then we have reject h naught if t 1 is less than minus t nu alpha and for the two sided alternative hypothesis, we have a two sided rejection region 
if modulus of t 1 is greater than or equal to t nu alpha by 2. There may be the case when the two samples are not independent. The situation may arise in the following uh, uh, following cases. See, we may have for example, we have to compare two things, but the sampling procedure may not be independent. Suppose you are considering effect of certain medicine on patients. Now, firstly a set of patients is chosen, we give one medicine and look at the effect. Then we take another medicine and on the same set of patients, we give the medicine at another time and then we observe the effect. Now, here the sampling scheme is dependent because the same set of patients are there. Uh, this is done because it could happen that depending upon the different patients, the effect of the medicine could be different. Therefore, in order to neutralize the effect of our variability due to different patients, we take the same set. Now, this is the problem of the correlated data and the previous procedures are not applicable here. So, I will consider here paired t test. Here, the sampling is not done independently for the two populations. We may consider situation as the data from a bivariate normal population. So, we may consider say x 1 y 1, x 2 y 2, x n y n, this follows a bivariate normal population with means mu 1 mu 2, variances sigma 1 square, sigma 2 square and a correlation coefficient rho. We are still interested in testing about the mu 1 minus mu 2. Therefore, what we can do, we can consider the linearity property of the bivariate normal distribution. If we consider y x i minus y i, this will follow a univariate normal distribution with mean mu 1 minus mu 2 and variance will become sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square minus twice rho sigma 1 sigma 2. Let us write this as say mu d and this as say sigma square d let me call this as d i. Then our data has become like d 1 d 2 d n follows normal mu d s d and sigma d square. And our hypothesis say for example, mu 1 is equal to mu 2, this is equivalent to mu d is equal to 0. Similarly, if I say mu 1 greater than mu 2, this is equivalent to mu d greater than 0. Similarly, mu 1 less than mu 2, this is equivalent to mu d less than 0. If I consider mu 1 is not equal to mu 2, this is equivalent to mu d not equal to 0. Therefore, this problem has reduced to the testing of the mean when we are considering one normal population that is sample from a single normal population and this is testing about the mean mu is equal to mu naught. For this, the test has already been derived let me rewrite for this particular situation. So, when we are considering h naught mu d is equal to 0 against say mu d greater than 0, then the test is reject h naught if square root n d bar divided by s d that is greater than or equal to t n minus 1 alpha. So, what is d bar here? d bar is the mean of the d i's and s d square 
is nothing but 1 by n minus 1 sigma d i minus d bar whole square. So, if I consider say h naught mu d great is equal to 0 against say h 1 mu d less than 0, then the rejection region will become root n d bar by s d less than or equal to minus t n minus 1 alpha. This is the rejection region. Similarly, if I am considering two sided then that will become rejection region will become two sided. This is the rejection region. Let us consider also the testing for the variance, equality of variances. So, we have two samples x 1, x 2, x m from normal mu 1 sigma 1 square and y 1, y 2, y n from normal mu 2 sigma 2 square. We are interested in testing say sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square against say sigma 1 square greater than sigma 2 square. Now, here we consider m minus 1 s 1 square by sigma 1 square that follows chi square on m minus 1 degrees of freedom and n minus 1 s 2 square by sigma 2 square follows chi square on n minus 1 degrees of freedom. If we assume the independence here, then the ratio of the two chi squares divided by their degrees of freedom that will follow an f distribution. So, we will get sigma 2 square by sigma 1 square s 1 by s 2 square that will follow f distribution on m minus 1 n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So, when sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square, then we consider f that is equal to s 1 square by s 2 square that will follow f on m minus 1 n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Now, standard convention is to keep the larger of the sample variances in the numerator. So, so that we do not have to look at the tables from both the sides. So, a standard convention is to place the larger of the sample variances in the numerator. So, that f ratio is always larger than 1. So, if we consider this hypothesis that is h naught sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square against h 1 sigma 1 square greater than sigma 2 square. So, the test will be h naught sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square against h 1 sigma square greater than sigma 2 square. We will have the test as reject h naught if f is greater than f m minus 1 n minus 1 alpha. If s 1 square is less than s 2 square, we consider h naught sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square against sigma 2 square greater than sigma 1 square and we consider f a star is equal to s 2 square by s 1 square and consider reject h naught if f a star is greater than f n minus 1 m minus 1 alpha. Then 
there is a large sample test also a large sample test for variances when both m and n are large then a test procedure which does not use the assumption of normality is available we can consider s1 following normal sigma 1 sigma 1 square by 2m as m is large and similarly s2 follows normal sigma 2 sigma 2 square by 2n as n is large we can consider here once again sp square is same as m minus 1 s1 square plus n minus 1 S two square divided by m plus n minus two, and we formulate Z star as S one minus S two divided by S P square root one by two m plus one by two n. This is approximately normal zero one. So if I am considering say mu one sigma one square is equal to sigma two square against say Sigma one square not sigma two square. Then we can consider the critical region as reject H not if modulus Z star is greater than or equal to Z alpha by two. We can also consider the test for binomial proportions. Let me describe one such situation. tests for proportions so the situation is th that we may have a binomial population so binomial np and usually n is known we have an observation from this binomial population and we may have to test say p is equal to p not Against say h one p is not equal to p not or say p greater than p not or p less than p not. In this case, we make use of the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. If you remember, we have x minus n p divided by root n p q. This is approximately normal zero one. So we can base our test on this. we can consider so let us use say let us call p head as x by n so we consider p head minus p not divided by root so what we have done we have divided by n here so if we also consider multiplication by that so root n p head q head so we have this uh, test statistic here we can call it say z1 so we will consider say for this hypothesis reject h not if modulus of z1 is greater than or equal to z alpha by 2 if i have one sided then we can consider reject h not if z1 is greater than or equal to z alpha and in this case it will become z less than or equal to minus z alpha similarly we may have to compare the uh, proportions of two normal uh, two binomial populations suppose we are considering two binomial proportions 
so we may have say x following binomial m p 1 and say y following binomial n p 2. We are interested to test whether p 1 and p 2 are the same or not. That means, we may have hypothesis like h naught p 1 is equal to p 2 against p 1 not equal to p 2. Let us use the notation say p 1 head is equal to the first proportion, p 2 head as the second proportion and let us also define a pooled proportion x plus y divided by m plus n p head. Then if we consider p 1 head minus p 2 head divided by square root p head into 1 minus p head into 1 by m plus 1 by n, then this will have approximately normal 0 1. So, let us denote this by say z 2 and we can give the rejection region as modulus z 2 greater than or equal to z alpha by 2. Let me consider certain examples here. on various testing problems. Lengths of one fit scales produced by a manufacturing process. So, 1 fit means basically 12 inches have sigma is equal to 0 0.01 inch. Then we want to test whether the average length of these scales is actually equal to 12 inches or not. So, a random sample of 16 scales yields an average length 12.01 inch. So, we want to test whether the production process is consistent or not. That means, test H naught whether mu is equal to 12 against say h 1 mu is greater than 12. That means, this actual difference of 0 0.01 is it significantly larger or not. Actually, this testing of problem uh, testing of hypothesis problems have to be seen in a proper physical perspective, because here the practical problem for the manufacturer is whether his manufacturing process produces the uh, one fit scales which are actually conforming to the guidelines. That means, they should actually measure 12 feet. If they are in general larger, then they are not good. So, it turns out this sample produces 12.01. So, does it, is it consistent with the hypothesis whether mu is equal to 12 or not? And uh, the variability is known that it is 0 0.01. So, in this case, the model is that we are having x 1, x 2, x 16 following normal mu sigma square is 0 0.01 square. So, we want to test this one. So, we create the test statistic root n x bar minus 12 that is mu naught divided by sigma. So, here it is root 16 x bar is 0 0.01 minus 12 divided by 0 0.01. Now, this is equal to 4. Now, you see the normal distributions curve. So, 4 will be coming somewhere here. So, actually all the probabilities almost all the probabilities concentrated before 4. Therefore, this value is certainly large. That means, if I consider say z is equal to 0 0.05 that is 1.645. If I consider say z is equal to 0.01 that is 2.33. If I consider say z is equal to 0.005 that is 2.575 if I consider say z is equal to 0 0.001, then that is 3.1. So, at all these levels, so h naught 
must be rejected. That means certainly the data does not support the hypothesis that mu is equal to 12. That is we conclude that the manufacturing process produces scales which on the average have lengths more than 12 inches. Alcohol content in cough syrups is a cause of concern because people use it as drugs in six randomly selected drug samples the alcohol content and it was measured in percentages was found to be 7 7.75 14.65 10 8.05 9.95 11.65 so we are interested to know if the average alcohol content is significantly more than 10 percent. So, this can be considered as a testing problem that we are having a data from normal mu sigma square and we want to test whether mu is less than or equal to 10 or mu is greater than 10. This hypothesis of course, we may write as mu is equal to 10 also, it does not matter because the test procedure is dependent upon the alternative hypothesis in the Neyman Pearson theory. Here we have, we will use the test statistic square root n x bar minus mu naught by s. So, for this particular data set n is 6, x bar turns out to be 10.34 and s is equal to 2.55. These uh, figures are approximated to two decimal digits and therefore, this value turns out to be 0.3266. Now, if I look at the value of the t distribution, the 0.05 value on 5 degrees of freedom that is equal to 2.015. If I look at say 0 0.01 degrees of freedom, no, sorry 0 0.1 on 5 degrees of freedom the 0 0.1 point that is 1.476 etcetera. Naturally, this value is smaller. So, we cannot reject H naught here on the basis of this data. That means, the drug, the alcohol content in the cough syrups is less than or equal to 10 percent here. The average error in recording measurements on the outcome of an experiment is 0. However, 
10 random measurements yielded errors and these are in say millimeter point zero one three minus point zero two four minus point zero zero one plus point zero one seven point zero zero four point zero zero eight minus point zero zero five point zero one minus point zero zero three minus point zero one nine we want to test whether the variable t is 0 0.01 or more. Now, this is the case when we are having the data from a normal population with mean 0 and variance sigma square. So, our test statistic is sigma xi square by sigma naught square that is equal to now for this particular data sigma x i square is 0 0.00161 and this is 0 0.01 square. So, that is equal to 1 16.1 here. Now, if you look at chi square value on 10 degrees of freedom then 0 0.05 point is 18.307 if we consider chi square on 0 0.01 that is 23.2093 etcetera. So, we cannot reject H naught here. That means, we can claim that here the average variability is less than or equal to 0 0.01. the performance of participants in a learning process is said to be consistent if the variability in scores on tests is less than 5. In 12 randomly selected, randomly conducted tests on a participant, the scores out of 100 were observed to be say 75, 68, 77, 82, 65, 60, 79, 83, 73, 78, 69, 62. Is the performance of the participant consistent. So, this can be considered as the problem from that we have a data from normal mu sigma square population and we want to test whether sigma square is less than or equal to 25 or sigma square is greater than 25. For this we construct the test statistic n minus 1 s square by sigma naught square. So, here n is equal to 12 s square we can calculate as 59.54 and sigma naught is equal to 5. So, this value turns out to be 26.2. Now, if you look at the chi square value on 11 degrees of freedom say point 0 0.05 this is equal to 19.68. If we consider say chi square 11 on point 0 0.01 that is 24.72.
However, if I consider chi square value on point 0, 0, 0.005 that is equal to 26.76. So, if alpha is say 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 then we reject H naught, but we cannot reject H naught if alpha is taken to be very very small. You can see here our decision to accept or reject H naught is dependent upon the level that we decide. So, in the significance testing we take the minimum value of uh, alpha for which we cannot reject H naught or we reject H naught. So, uh, that is called the p value and uh, in many studies we simply report a p value and it will be dependent upon the practitioner the person who is going to use whether that is really significant or not. So, that is called significant testing, but the more about that later on. Let us consider the two sample problems. Carbon emissions on eight randomly selected vehicles of brand A were recorded as 150, 250, 280, 290, 210, 220, 180, whereas those of 10 randomly selected of brand B were recorded as say 140, 230, 270, 190, 270, 200, 150, 200, 190 and 170. Now, first of all test the hypothesis that the variances of the two populations are the same. And for this you can take say for example, alpha is equal to 0.1 that means 10 percent level of significance. Now, based on this result, test the hypothesis that the average emission from vehicles of brand B is less than the average emission from brand A. Now, this is a two sample problem, we can consider the model as one random sample from normal mu 1 sigma 1 square and another is from normal mu 2 sigma 2 square. The two samples are considered independent. Here m is equal to 8, n is equal to 10 and let us calculate the means that is 227.5 for the first sample. For the second sample it is 201 and we also calculate the sample variances from the two populations. Now, firstly we carry out a f test for the equality of the 
variances. Now notice here that we are having s1 square larger. So, we consider the alternative as whether sigma 1 square is significantly larger than sigma 2 square. Now, if you consider this then we take f as s1 square by s2 square and that is equal to 1.1463 and the corresponding f value on m minus 1 n minus 1 degrees of freedom and at alpha is equal to 0 0.1 if you see the tables of the f distribution this is 2.5053. Now, this value is smaller. So, h naught cannot be rejected here. Now, if we want to do the testing for, so if uh, h naught cannot be rejected, so we may take sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square is equal to sigma square. Now, if we want to consider the test for mu 1 is equal to mu 2 against say mu 1 is greater than mu 2, then we consider the test statistic root m n by m plus n that is for the pooling x bar minus y bar divided by s p. So, here you calculate the pooled sample variance that turns out to be 2114.9588 that is S p is equal to 45.99, then this value turns out to be 1.21. If you look at the t value on m plus n minus 2 degrees of freedom at say 0 0.05 that is equal to 1.746 and if I consider 0 0.01 etcetera the value is going to be further larger. Therefore, we cannot reject h naught. That means, the carbon emission in the second vehicle average emission is not significantly smaller than the first one. Although from the values here you can see it is 201 and here it is 227, but since the variability is quite large therefore, we conclude here that the variability of uh, the two of them is almost the same as we concluded by f test and then by applying the pooled uh, sample variance test for the equality of the means we are concluding that we cannot reject the hypothesis of the equality here. Let me give one example of the pairing here. to study the relative effectiveness of two medicines for reducing blood sugar levels, a random sample of 6 patients was given the first medicine and their reduction in blood sugar levels were recorded. Thereafter, in the second trial, the same set of patients was given the second medicine and again the reduction was recorded. We want to test whether the effects are the same. That means, the two medicines are equally effective or they are not. 
okay so here the data is paired we are considering say x i y i is following bivariate normal model so the data that is given here is on the six patients let me name them as 1 2 3 4 5 6 and reduction in the blood sugar level reduction in blood sugar level that is recorded here as a 5.8 4.4 6.8 7 6.3 8.4 and in the second medicine it is 4.9 4.5 6.0 7 6.4 and 8.1 we want to test whether mu 1 is equal to mu 2 or mu 1 is not equal to mu 2 so we consider the differences the differences here let us call it d i so it will be 0 0.9 minus 0 0.1 0 0.8 0 minus 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 so, here d bar will be equal to 0.3, s d is equal to 0.45. So, t is equal to root 6.0.3 divided by 0.45, that is equal to 1.63 approximately. If we consider the t value on say point 0 1 alpha is equal to 0 0.01 at 5 degrees of freedom that is 3.365 so certainly we cannot reject we cannot reject h naught at say 2 percent level of significance however if we reduce the uh, if we increase the level of significance we can consider the t table here let me show you here for 5 degrees of freedom if we consider for example if we consider for example say 20 percent here in place of 2 percent suppose i take t 0 0.1 on 5 then that value is equal to 1.476 now here if you compare so h naught is rejected then at 20 percent level so we need to fix up the level of significance in the given problems however if i consider say 10 percent so if i take 0 0.05 on 5 that value is equal to 2.015 so, H naught is not rejected at 10 percent level. Therefore, in the testing problems, it is extremely important that we carefully weigh our uh, level of significance that we want, we should be sure of how much level of significance we can allow in the given problem because that is related to the probability of type 1 error. So, this is the Neyman Pearson theory. Uh, there are other uh, comparative theories like the significance testing which I mentioned the minimum level of uh, uh, significance where the hypothesis is rejected. Uh, then there are other procedures like uh, we have Jeffries prior etcetera. So, one has to take care of.